right, good morning, good morning, Crossroads. You may be seated. Good to see you on this beautiful Sunday. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I am enjoying the weather. Isn't this beautiful weather we've been having? Fabulous. This is fabulous. For those of you that are looking for something exciting to do, you, you're feeling bored at home, this is fabulous weed pulling weather. <laughs> you have weeds, if your neighbor has weeds, if you have ants, whatever the case may be, uh, spraying ants, there's a lot of stuff to do uh, this time of the year. Um, we are on the other side of the tomb. We are on the other side of the cross. Um, we are at a point where uh, Jesus has risen from the dead. Uh, and his resurrection has been uh, solidified, not by the witnesses, uh, not by the fact that Thomas has put his hand in the side of Jesus and said, until I put my hand into his side and touch his wound, uh, his wound, uh, will I believe? Uh, this, is, this has been satisfied by the fact that Jesus rose himself from the dead. He resurrected himself. Now, there's a portion of scripture here in the book of John in John chapter 20 that I wanted to share with you. And, and John, he, he mentions this, and it almost seems like it's the end uh, of the book of John, but it is not. And here's what John writes. John chapter 20, verse, uh, uh, verse 30. Jesus, Jesus did many other Aside from simply being rosen from the dead, if this, that wasn't enough. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus... The Word who became flesh is the Christ, the only true propitiation, the one qualified one, the Lamb, the unblemished one, who came to redeem us from our sins, uh, the Son of God, the only begotten, the true, the holy, the only one of God, and that by believing, watch this, you may have life in His name. <coughs> This is the benefit that we receive as a result of our believing. Now, here's the thing. Mark has believing nine times written in his book. Matthew and Luke has believing ten times written in their book. John has this particular principle of believing written 99 times in his book. Why? These things are written so that you may believe. Pistueo. Believe. Now, pistueo, and I'm going to keep this real short in 30 seconds or less. Pistueo, pistueo isn't just a crisis moment where we automatically just say one day and we, our lies are, and the scales fall from our eyes and we say, I believe. That, that, is, that is salvation belief. That is a portion of believing. But what he's talking about here, when he says so that you may believe, it is an active belief that causes you to have continual belief in God that reflects not only your behavior, but your life. From the point of belief throughout the rest of your life, your life affects the proclamation of your belief from your trans transition, uh, from your conversion, and now from your relation. It all attends to this pisteo of belief. These things I have written, not just so that you proclaim belief, but so that your life exhibits belief. And these things I have written is what John is saying. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Cool. God's word is so awesome. And that's why you're here today. People say, why are you going to church? Man, you can sleep in. Hit that snooze button. Don't go in today. Don't you know the game's gone? The game's coming on. You can go watch the Giants lose again. Come on now. Let's get 
you say, no, I'm coming in because I believe. I believe. I don't just have a proclamation of belief. I have a long I have a persistence of belief. Come hell or high water, no matter what happens in my life, I believe. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we thank you for your precious word. Father, we thank you, Lord, that these things were written so that we may believe, Heavenly Father. The disciples were witnesses of these things, Lord. We know that a witness of, uh, of two or more, Heavenly Father, that it is judicious. It is judicial in the court of law. There was 12 disciples, Heavenly Father, that witnessed these things. There was 12, Heavenly Father, that could give testimony. There was 12 that can give proclamation. There was 12, Heavenly Father, that saw, that heard, that emotionally felt, Lord, the miracle that were going on, Heavenly Father, so that we, Lord, will be recipients of their testimony and their witness and their proclamation so that we too may believe, Lord. Heavenly Spirit, Heavenly Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to come to infuse us this morning. We ask for the transformative, for the sustaining and the infusing power of your Holy Spirit to be in this service. And we pray this in the name of Jesus and all the God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Gill. Would you, good people, um, give us a minute while we pause for a technical adjustment, just real quick? I was looking all over the house for this. Thank you, brother. If he gets distracted, there's no telling where he's going to go. So <laughs> he was. Yes, I took my bets this morning. In the sweet by and by.
drive by is, but it sounds like a good place to be. Yeah. So yeah. let's all go, shall we? <laughs> I heard an old, old story about victory in Jesus. Yeah. 